Hey, it's Brent here again. Welcome to my second installment of getting your prints created from an online lab. So the first time I did this was with Mpix, and you can take a look at that video on my YouTube channel, and it's also in my a part of my online course that I do on printing. And so this is the second in that series, and with this one, I have decided to take a look at Nation's Photo Lab. So that was their product page, this is their home page, and just so you know, luck would have it, I have 40% off all prints as I'm doing this, so that's pretty cool. Really appreciate that. And they offer right now free shipping on orders over $49. I'm pretty sure I will not go over $49, but we'll see how it goes. I just might dive too deeply into it. So the first thing I want to look at, as I always do with these types of things, is some of the setup and some of the ideas on what we're doing. So I'm going to scroll down here to our support page. And here we will see a few things related to just what it is we're looking for. Uh, as far as website ordering, and we've got some product FAQs, and then all the way down here we've got some regular FAQs, and then photography terminology. So let's take a look really quick at some product FAQs, and the one I want to highlight is what type of photographic paper do they use. What we're using here is a Kodak Endura Premier paper, so this is a standard photographic process paper. And it's certainly, I've printed on this type of paper in the past. Certainly it's a great paper. There's there's absolutely nothing wrong with this paper. Uh, it's a very good paper. I'm going to get really good quality uh, with this, I'm sure. As we look at the rest, there's just other things that you can look at if you're curious to know about them. You know, do they offer editing services, etc. But what I'm also going to be interested in, of course, is do they offer under their photography terminology, do they offer other things that I'm looking at? So for instance, they have instructions on soft proofing, that's good. Do they accept CMYK? No, this quick answer is they don't. Uh, they offer dye sublimation, which is amazing. So, you know, we could really use this company for a lot of different things and that's really cool. I really appreciate that. Uh, one thing I'm super interested in are these ICC profiles. And I happen to have this already installed on my system, but I wanted to show you. They've got the whole thing here listed out, and then they provide you with profiles. But a huge thing that we want to make sure that we are doing, that is the profiles only be used as soft proofing. So that's basically the step we would take in Photoshop. It must not be used as a working space while editing the image. So we're going to still be working in sRGB, but we can use this as a soft proofing step so we can kind of double check our work and we can start to understand how this is coming through for us, what's happening as we do this. So let's actually open up an image now. I'm going to open up my print master file for Hong Kong. And so I have it in Photoshop here now. And what I want to do is probably I'll go ahead and expand this just a hair so I can really maximize my view of this image. And if I would hit a zero instead of an O, then I'll get it done right. So there we are. So this is the print master, which means it's just huge. And so I need to uh, size it, but I'm going to take care of color, anything color related first. So I'm going to go to uh, proof setup and I'll do custom. And then we're going to simulate and we're going to look for the NPL for Nation's Photo Lab. So it should be way down here. And NPL Luster, that's what I'm going to be printing on. And so let's go ahead and hit the that. And then we will come over here and hit gamut warning. There's just a few areas where it's a little bit you know, out of whack, out of whatever. But one other thing I can tell you, let's turn the gamut warning off for now. And that is, I know this thing is in pro photo. And so if I were to switch this to what they need it to be, so I, let's go ahead and switch ourselves over to sRGB and hit okay. And so that caused a slight color shift. I noticed a little bit going on here in these leaves here. But now let's go ahead and proof these colors and make sure we're still in the NPL luster. We are. And now let's do the gamut warning. And now what is giving us a warning is very, very minimized uh, comparatively. It was a little more than before. And so now this is so minimized. I do see some slight differences here, 
but I'm going to decide not to worry about it because I'm just pretty sure this is going to be fine anyway. And besides, this is part of the learning process too. So I just want to know from these variety of images that I'm going to send in, I just want to know what is it that actually looks good Oh, how it looks, number one, does it look good? Of course, I think it's going to look good, but how it looks. And then I'll be able to learn, okay, in these areas for this lab, I needed to make this adjustment. I need to make this adjustment and whatever the case might be there. So let's take a look now down here because I found this other thing that's very interesting under the standard FAQs. And then we're going to look for this locating image file specs and pixel dimensions. And so they have a little bit of thing here, but then they have this pixel chart and pixel resolution guide. So I had opened up this pixel resolution guide and this has some very interesting information for us. And so what they're telling us is, let's scroll down here because they this is really written for beginners and that's awesome. So if you don't have much uh, you know, experience in this, this is going to be really good learning material for you. And so it says a PPI of 300 is required. So we'll, we'll make that happen in Photoshop for us. Uh, enlarging photograph, yeah, so resing up, etc. So down here, there, we're looking at a minimum of 180 is what they recommend. And they call that a good quality print. And then for best quality prints, they want 300. So for the 8x10, that means a 1400 by 1800 or 2400 by 3000 on the pixel size. And that's what I'm going to be ordering today is the 8x10. Now let's go grab my other two images. Actually, I got three images, I think, that I'm going to be printing. I'm going to try a, a straight on black and white and see how that goes. But here we're going to go with my Dubrovnik image. So let's take a look here really quick. And let's. So I still need to change the sRGB. So here we are changing to sRGB. And now let's go proof our colors and give me the gamut warning. And pretty much, let's go ahead and verify that we got the NPL luster here. Yeah, pretty much everything. I don't see a lick of gray coming through. So everything on this image should come through just perfectly as far as what we're expecting to, to take a look at. So now it's time to crop and let's see here. Um, yeah, I need to have a little more of this boat down here. So we'll go that direction. We're going to verify 10 by 8 at 300. Perfect. And now let's take this down to 8 bits. So one thing I want to make sure that we do, and I'm just going to do this for one of these images, and that is to do our standard sharpening stuff. And I just want to do this so this is my normal practice. Again, this is a learning technique, a learning process, and I wanted to just be able to make sure that this also comes through fine for us and doesn't look weird in the end or anything like that. So when I come to uh, taking a look at what we're doing here with our standard sharpening, uh, I'll usually start in the neighborhood of 100 and then I'll do one half of 1% and that would be 1.5 and then the threshold between probably 8 and 12 just depending on the subject. Now in this image, if you've seen others, especially for my online course, I actually use a different technique for sharpening because I don't like how the um, the roof gets way over sharpened and then here this area it gets sharpened but it's it's not a whole lot and so I'm gonna I'm gonna reduce this to about 90 just because that roof I don't like it getting so over sharpened so that's gonna be a lot better right there and so when I use a different technique I can kind of balance that out in one sharpening session for this I'm just gonna try and keep it simple and not really worry about those nitty-gritty details so let's go ahead and hit the OK button and then we'll certainly get that saved as our JPEG and, and certainly embed the profile and all that stuff. And there we have it. So I'm going to skip the others as we do, as we get to the sharpening, but let's, you know, the, when we pick it up next, we'll be uh, placing the order. All right, let's get on to placing our order. And one thing, I guess, you know, I also want to just kind of look at, they offer so much, like this wall decor, big canvas prints, all sorts of good stuff. Photo books, you know, I'm only going to be looking at their prints right now, and I'm going to specifically be looking at their luster prints. So I'm looking at trying to gauge the best I can the, the same type of thing from lab to lab, and then I'm going to compare the prints in a final video where I look at all the prints, and the price here is just amazing, especially since they're on sale. So that's nice too. 
but let's go ahead and load up our eight by 10 here. And then we're gonna upload photos. Now I would like to state, this is the very first time I've done this process with this company. So whatever I do here, if I mess up and I have to go back, I'm going to conclude everything because I just want you to kind of see the process and maybe learn from my mistakes or whatever the case might be. So let's go ahead and add photos and drag and drop it says. So I'm going to go grab my images from over here. While this is uploading, I can say I don't normally use a lab to make prints. I just love printing myself. But sometimes the lab is just so convenient. And, you know, if you don't have your own printer, of course, you're going to want to use a lab anyway. So uh, in doing this, uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to use this lab all the time by any means. I'm just showing you how this process goes and, and all that good stuff. All right, so um, I guess we can hit select. I don't know what to do here. See, this is why I said this is the first time I'm doing this at all. And I don't know where to go from here because, oh, I guess I can hit order prints. I thought I was already doing that. Um, so, okay, so I've got my gallery here. Uh, select options. Um, no, I'm going to actually select not color corrected. And so for some reason that's not showing up properly, but basically if you do color correction, they offer a guarantee and that's really cool. And if you use their ROES system where you download some software and you, uh, and you do it not through the website, they'll actually provide some color correction options for free just so you can see how good they are and stuff like that. I'm looking to take the, uh, the, the track of saying, you know, for those of you who don't view yourself as uh, wanting to go that route, basically, maybe you're not a professional photographer, you're just getting some prints for your family, or maybe you're getting some prints for yourself or for your office or whatever. Uh, I'm going to choose not color corrected because I want to see and learn exactly how they are doing things to my images. I've looked at their profile, everything. I just want to learn exactly without their interrupting what I'm doing. So I'm going to turn that off for myself. Now for yourself, that may be something you want to do. And that's totally fine if that's what you want to do. But they do make a guarantee as well. So if you make this button selected and you don't like the color, then you get a free reprint. And you can call them or write them and say, hey... I think it's to this, I think it's to that, and they will reprint it for you at no cost. So that's pretty cool. So uh, framing options. No, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to do an 8x10. Um, I guess I only want one. See, this is what the problem is, because I've got four in there. Am I ordering one of each, or am I ordering one only? I don't know what that what that means. So I'm going to hit add to cart. Please correct the following. No photos selected. Please select the photos you want printed. Well, you know, huh? um, okay. Um, now that I've selected the photos, I've opened up the album and I've selected the photos I want printed. I'm going to assume this means I want one of each. So let's hit add to cart. All right, one print, eight by 10 luster, one print, eight by 10 luster, so on and so forth. I had mentioned that I, I wanted to get the same type of thing across all labs. I guess there's one thing I really should highlight, and that is from MPix. They offered a true black and white option. These folks are not. So this is going to still be on the same uh, paper as everything else. So that's, that is one thing that we'll be able to look at as the difference of what we're looking for. All right, so the cropping and whatnot, I can rotate it and whatever else. I don't need to do that because I already cropped it in... Photoshop. I got it exactly the size I want it. So I, there's nothing here that I need to do. Uh, but it is nice. I could, it looks like I could adjust the cropping or change print orientation, whatever, if I wanted to uh, change things up a little bit. You know, if I was just uploading a basic, you know, unedited image as far as cropping, etc., I, I could have some cha changes there. All right, continue to cart. Yes, let's do that. All right, so that's going to cost me a whopping $5.00. 68 cents plus um, shipping because I'm not going to cross that threshold of $49. And that's fine. I will be happy to pay a little bit of dollars in shipping. 
Uh, add back printing. I don't really need to do that. Uh, that would be to put like my copyright or something like that on the back of the prints. I don't really care about that on these prints. They're not going anywhere other than the review I have going on here. Let's see, add boutique packaging. That could be really nice if um, if if you were to sell these. You know, they're going to package it up really nice. Um, again, they're giving me the idea of color correction. No, I don't want that. I don't want to put a linen texture on there. Photo coloration, add mounting, add framing, photo border. Not interested in those items. So it's time to just check out. And in the checkout process, it looks like they're trying to upsell me on these different type items. Wood print wraps and a compact mirror. No, I'm not interested. Thanks, but I'm not interested. And let's see here. It's going to only cost me $4.00 to ship it that's not bad so it's less than ten dollars for this entire order that's pretty sweet as you can see i put in my my payment and address stuff already and it has been blocked out for you on this video but this is pretty sweet as far as less than ten dollars for these four prints i'm ready to go and there we have it i've got my web order here again i've blocked it out for your view and all the information here and i'm sure this is being emailed to me as well so that rounds out the ordering process for nation's photo lab take a look sometime hopefully next week i'll be able to go through these prints and i'll be able to look at them and see exactly you know what are my initial impressions what do i think how do i feel about these images Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't heard already, I've got a podcast. I actually have two podcasts, the Latitude Photography Podcast and the Master Photography Podcast, plus my online course all about learning to print your images yourself, whether using your own printer, that's what the focus is on, or if you're going to go to a lab like this. So if that is of interest to you, follow the link down there in the notes, and I'll see you in the next video.